Well, uh, Darren Aronofsky's new movie, Mother, and that's small case M and then with an exclamation point at the end, um, has certainly stirred up a lot of controversy. And uh, not surprisingly, it features uh, murder and mayhem and point blank executions and uh, the uh, uh, sacrificing and devouring of a child. So <laughs> I know it seems like a very pleasant night at the movies. Uh, the movie, I think, will just seem utterly, utterly weird unless you appreciate it, as I think he meant it to be appreciated, as a kind of allegory. And once, once you crack the code, I think it makes a certain amount of sense. However, I would say as a, as a Christian that the message it's conveying is at best uh, rather ambiguous. Well, the movie begins with these two characters played by Jennifer Lawrence and Javier Bardem. They're never named, by the way, so we don't have a name for these two figures. They're meant to be kind of archetypal figures. They're a married couple. They're in this beautiful home out in the country, surrounded just by wilderness, it looks like. They're in the process of renovating this, um, this beautiful house. And uh, they're at peace, it seems. And then one fine day, uh, these two characters uh, arrive, played by Ed Harris and Michelle Pfeiffer. They're also unnamed. And um, Bardem takes a kind of liking to the Harris character, but right away, uh, the, the mother figure is, is very uneasy with these two. As they spend more time in the house, things get more and more tense between them. Then, to everyone's great surprise, the two grown sons of these two visitors also show up at the house. And they are, from the moment they arrive, at odds with each other. There's this great uh, verbal and then physical violence. And then it shockingly turns into a murder as the, as the one brother kills the other one. And after he does it, he actually cuts himself on his forehead with a, a shard of glass. In time, after the, the brother dies, many members of their family come to this home to mourn and to, uh, to uh, reach out to the couple. As a result, the house is invaded by all kinds of people who begin to interrupt and disrupt and turn things over and, and so on and so forth. Keep in mind, too, that all during this first part of the movie, we're learning that there is a kind of symbiotic relationship between the Jennifer Lawrence character, the mother, and the house itself. She puts her hand on the the wall of the house and she kind of listens and then she intuits this beating heart within the house. So there's a, there's a real symbiotic relationship between the two. Okay, so there's how the first part of the movie ends. And you say, okay, what in the world is going on? Well, I think biblical people will get pretty clearly this, this allegory. The Bardem character seems to be like the god of the Old Testament. Um, the Jennifer Lawrence character is something like nature or Mother Earth. The two visitors, right, Ed Harris and, and Michelle Pfeiffer, Adam and Eve, their warring sons, one who kills the other, Cain and Abel. In fact, Cain bears the mark that the Bible describes. And then all the people that come, all the members of their family, would be the human race that comes from this original uh, pair. What are they doing now? But in their, in their violence, they're also disrupting the house. They're upsetting the Jennifer Lawrence character and they're destroying the house. So you say, okay, okay, I get it. Um, there's God and there's sort of nature, earth, mother nature, and then there's these human beings that have come on the scene and their violence and, and so on has led to a great attack, you might say, on mother nature. And as I watched the movie, I thought, you know, okay, so far so good, fair enough, biblically. Because there is a strong sense in the Bible of sin interrupting our relationship with nature. Sin is not just a matter of, of human beings sort of battling one another, but it has a very deleterious effect on our relationship with the earth and with nature. So I'm thinking, okay, you know, kind of interesting little allegory going on. Well, the movie continues, and uh, after all these figures are expelled from the house, and that's, by the way, Bardem's character, like the god of the Old Testament, finally expels them from the, from the house, as Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden. There's a period of peace. So um, Jennifer Lawrence becomes pregnant, and the Bardem character, who's a writer and had been kind of in writer's block, is now able to write. The creative juices are flowing. He begins to produce this great uh, work of literary art. So during this time of gestation, all seems to be at peace. However, the book then gets finished, 
And in very short order, a uh, chaos ensues. Now why? Because all these people now start coming into the house again because they want to commune with the author. They, they've read the book and they've been so moved by it. They want to touch him. They want a piece of him. They want a piece of his life. They begin to, to disrupt the house again. They start engaging in ritual behavior, etc., etc. In time, this now becomes hyper-violent because all the people who have come to commune with him start to fight with each other. As they fight with each other, the house gets even more compromised. The movie comes to a kind of weird climax as World War III basically breaks out among all these people who have come to commune with the author. He's reveling in the attention even as the house is being destroyed. Okay, now things get even weirder. Because now the Jennifer Lawrence character, who is pregnant, gives birth to a child, to a baby boy. As you know, he gave birth to the book, you know, as she gives birth to the child. Immediately the father wants the child back, and the mother is hyper-protective. She's hanging on to the baby. She's defending him. But finally she falls asleep and the, and the child is taken. The people just want to just want to see the child, they just want to commune. But in time, they, they take the child, this little baby, and they kill him and they devour him. With this, the mother figure is so outraged that she goes into a, a kind of meltdown and she goes into the basement of the house to the kind of the furnace and she contrives to blow up the whole thing. So you say, okay, okay, I'm getting the allegory about Adam and Eve and sin and how our sin affects earth and mother nature. The second half seems to be something of an allegory of the New Testament. The book, you know, is this the scripture, is this the, the New Testament itself? All of the people coming, all their ritual things and trying to get a piece of the, the author and the book and all this. Is that the kind of obsessive ritualism that has sometimes dogged Christianity? And then the warfare. Is this the violence between religious people up and down the ages? And then finally, Weirdly, with the child, is it a kind of um, strained allegory of the Eucharist, of the, the devouring of the Son of God? You know? Now, if the first part of the movie had at least some I think, legitimate biblical allegorizing going on, I think the second half, things just really fall apart. Um, God does not need our praise, so the Bardem character that's reveling in the praise of all these crazy people coming to the house, that is not the God of the Bible, everybody. The God of the Bible does not need the world, does not need the praise of the world. Um, furthermore, the Son of God is indeed offered in sacrifice, is indeed devoured, if you want, in the, uh, in, in the Eucharist. But see, it has nothing to do with pagan rituals of people grasping. Rather, it's seen as a great self-gift of the Son of God. The Eucharist is, um, is Christ offering himself for the salvation of the world, not being grasped as it were, you know. But then see, finally and maybe most importantly, in light of the thematics of this movie, the New Testament does not portray things as humanity over and against nature. It's not a question of human salvation which then causes all this trouble for Mother Nature. In fact, read the New Testament deeply and you'll find the same motifs that are found in the Old Testament, namely that sin has disrupted our right relationship to nature, that nature rebels and reacts against human sin. The God of the Bible is not simply humanistic as opposed to nature. No, no. The redemption wrought in Christ is for us, yes, but is also for the world in a very deep way. So the allegorizing in the second half of the movie, to me, just, just all fell apart. But here's what I want to conclude with. What I think is maybe important here uh, in this admittedly kind of weird movie, um, Pope Francis has drawn our attention to what I call the legitimate ecological consciousness of biblical people. Uh, as I've said, clearly in the Old Testament, salvation is not just for us, it's for the whole world. Sins affected not just us, but the whole world. In becoming human, in a certain way, God becomes all of creation in a certain way and taking on flesh he takes on the whole natural environment for flesh 
look at all sorts of symbols within the New Testament that indicate the cosmic implication of salvation. If you doubt me, read the letters of St. Paul sometime. The cosmic Christ who saves nature as well as humanity. Um, I, I'd be happy in some ways if this movie drew some attention to these themes in the Bible. What it does though is it presents it too much as this sharp contrast. You know, that humanity is simply this sort of rape of nature. The God of the Bible stands athwart the interests of the world. There, nothing could be further from the truth. So watch the movie, take in some of these biblical themes, but do it, you know, with a grain of salt.